it's MJ and welcome. Today on this video, I want to bring you two yin poses that I think work fabulous if you're experiencing any tightness through the outer hips. One of the reasons why this area tends to be very, very tight is by and large, we're all sitting at our computers or perhaps driving in the car. And so ergonomically, we may not be in the best position and it adds to tightness. The outer hips also resonate with the gallbladder meridian, which represents the element of yang wood. And yang wood, think of it in nature, is the trunk of the tree. So the trunk of the tree is very rigid and stiff versus let's say the branches that have pliability and kind of sway with the wind. So there tends to be more stiffness in the outer hip area to begin with. So with yin yoga, it's a good idea to make sure you have some props, maybe some blocks or a blanket or a bolster or a pillow. Uh, that does bode well. You wanna bear in mind that you're gonna bring your body into the shape of the pose, the yantra or the form of the pose. And you wanna take it to an intelligent edge, meaning that you go only as far as you'll be able to sustain that position for some time, because the element of time does come into play with yin practice. We're working to move beyond the outer sheath of the muscles and move deeper within the more yin aspects of connective tissue, the ligaments, and especially the fascia. All of these aspects of our body with age tend to deteriorate. So it's so important that we move into such a practice. Now, yin yoga is also um, really, really good to calm uh, not only the body, but the mind. And so there's a phrase that says, if you want to be like the Tao, you got to move like a cow. A cow moves very, very slowly. In India, the cow is considered a sacred animal and very enlightened because of its peaceful nature and it moves very slowly. So first pose we're going to take is deer pose. And we really come and hold it in yin practice, you can hold anywhere from 90 seconds up to five minutes or even longer. So we're gonna just take it probably around two minutes or so just to kind of get the feel for it. But um, you could do this on your own and go longer if you would like. So deer pose, we'll start with the right chin forward. We're gonna bring it forward so it's aligning to the top of your mat. As you lean to the right, you're gonna bend through the back, left knee in this case, the edges of your feet into the earth. Now. If you have um, some tenderness on the inner aspect of the back knee, in this case, the left knee, you can use a pillow or perhaps a blanket here like I have to just give a little bit of a cushion because I'm, I'm rather bony, so um, that does bother me without a cushion because there's just hard surface underneath here. So we're gonna go ahead and begin to walk forward. Now, you can just stay on your forearms here if you would like to take a, a block uh, and use them as benches for your forearms to bring the earth up, you certainly can. If you just want one block here and you want to use it for the forehead, you have different heights on your block where that forehead can rest. Now, if it's in your practice to come all the way down, then you will come all the way down. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the timer on here for us and then just begin to dissolve downward towards the earth here. And bring your awareness to your breath, slowly inhaling and exhaling. Perhaps begin to notice where there might be parts of your body that are resisting the shape of the pose. So I like to say, begin to bring awareness to the edges of your feet here and soften the edges of the feet. And as you release the edges of your feet, you'll begin to feel a rebound effect. You'll feel some softness just moving towards the heels and the ankles. And then from the ankles, there's a slow but gentle release through the right calf the right shin. Let that energy simply glide 
the outer aspect of the right knee. Let it soften and ease its way to the outer right thigh. And then imagine that it's simply pooling like a warm bath of flowing energy the outer right hip. The more you let go and release and just invite gravity to melt the front body closer to the earth, the more you'll begin to feel opening sensations, little micro movements within the body. With each breath, soften the energy across the lumbar spine and then begin to feel it melt down the left hip, the left groin, softening the inner left thigh, the inner left knee. And just roll down the left shin and into the left foot. Notice what your forearms are doing here. Are they trying to hold you up from the earth? Can you soften through the shoulders and let them release down deeper? As you breathe softly, notice what your fingertips are doing. Are they soft and supple with an arching of buoyancy in the palms of your hands? Or are you trying to grip and hold yourself upon the earth? Remember Mother Earth, Gaia will will hold you so you can fully surrender here with each breath in and each breath out. And taking one more breath here. On your next breath, begin to lift up, placing your palms to the earth and walk them towards your body. Take pause for a moment here. And then as you lean to the right, we're gonna sweep the left leg around to stack the left knee on top of the right. Now, they seem a bit off here, so come forward on your fingertips, restack the knees, and then sit back. You can position yourself here. Now, you may find for your body that there is a great deal of space between the two knees, and if so, you can take your blanket and prop it between to absorb that energy. Let's stop the clock there. Good. And so here, first we're gonna work with the side body. So we're gonna come into a lateral flexion for the spine. So take your left fingertips and walk out just a little bit. And then the right arm is gonna sweep up overhead. So we're just gonna stay here for maybe about 20 breaths, all right? And what we're working here now is the side body. And if you think about it during your day, we don't move our spine sideways. And the spine moves six ways. So we wanna make sure that we do invite a lateral flexion in. I want you to think about a riverbed and how the edges of the riverbed begin to erode. And so when we don't move the spine in a lateral flexion, the side body begins to shorten and erode, if you will. And so by just side bending here, not only are the muscles of the inner arm getting a nice stretch here, but the side body, where we begin to expand and stretch through the intercostal spaces or the muscles that regulate the rib cage when we breathe, expanding the lungs, so that's a beautiful thing. And the other thing to bear in mind is that there's a very large muscle in the back, the QL, the quadratus laborum, and that muscle can shrink and contract, and that what contributes to a lot of low back pain. So take two more breaths here in this lateral flexion, inhaling and exhaling. Breath body in. 
and breath, body out. As you inhale, press away the earth and rise back up. Now we're gonna soften here into the arches of your feet with the palms of your hands. Just give it a little rub there. And then as you exhale, we're gonna come forward. So once again, if you want to block, you can tip it up for a third eye pillow. Or if you prefer, as I said, our little timer here, you can just bow in holding the arches of your feet. And just begin to soften here. The mind will gravitate towards sensation in the body. And the mind wants to convince the body to pull out of the pose. The mind is what's doing the resisting. So we want to begin to, again, track the breath, bring our awareness to the breath. And because the front body is forward towards the earth, we'll concentrate the breath through the back body beginning to explore the back of the lungs and the back of the heart and breathing gently in to the kidneys, which represents our physical gene, which represents the lineage of humanity, the wisdom of the elders. So we breathe into that space. And as the breath moves there, the weight of gravity keeps moving us closer to the earth, to be held by the earth. Begin to soften once again the edges of your feet, softening of the toes. And just allow that energy to glide with grace up through the sides of the shin. Casting on the outer aspect of the knees. And as it rides the waves on the outer parts of the thighs, once again invite the energy to pull on the outer aspect of the hips. You may notice a little bit more right now sensation to the outer right hip. Simply release. As you breathe in, and as you breathe out. Perhaps notice what your jaw is doing at this moment in time, or your teeth clench. And so can you create a little space between the upper and the lower teeth. Take one more breath here. And then as you exhale, begin to lift your heart up and out. And rise up. Gently, your hands go behind you, unfetter the legs, and just begin to wiper the knees from side to side. And then gently relaxing, working your way back up. And we'll go ahead and take the left shin forward, bending through the right knee out towards the right side. Once again, if you need a cushion for the inner aspect of that right knee, by all means do so. And then we're gonna go ahead here and begin to walk forward. And as you come forward down into the space of the earth, find your way in. So if you need your props, use them. You may find one side to be very different from the other, so honor that. So wherever that may work for you, just simply fold in and release. Always come back to the breath. The breath is the teacher, the inner guru. If we follow the breath, everything else will simply melt away. The weight of the physical body, the matter, 
begins to soften and become absorbed into the earth. The weight of the body, the heaviness, just melts down and becomes an imprint in the earth. Keep softness through the soles of the feet, the toes, the edges of your feet. Like the edges of the mind, just invited to soften and melt. At the front of the heart, open into the depths of the bedrock of the earth. As you breathe in and as you breathe out, perhaps hearing the sound vibration of your breath, breathing in and breathing out. Soften the shoulders. the jaw. Soften the throat. Ease the rib cage and the back. go the inner and the outer aspects of the thigh and the hip. As you breathe in and as you breathe out. On your next breath, begin to rise up tall arms and walk the hands gently back towards your body. Leaning left, Grab the right leg and sweep it around, stacking it. Once again, if you need to come forward, reposition those knees, then do so. If you need a prop between the knees, then do so. If you're unable to stack the knees, you can come into your easy pose of Sukhasana, cross-legged position with the right shin in front because each side is different. So we're gonna go ahead and work with the side body bend first, the lateral extension. So walk the right fingertips out and sweep the left arm overhead. So we're just taking a few breaths here to begin to awaken the left side body. You'll feel that beautiful stretch from the left hip along the rib cage, rising up, softening, hollowing out the left armpit, and easing the energy out of the left fingertips as you breathe in, and as you breathe out, feeling that length, the longevity being infused into the fascia the ligaments, the connective tissue of the body. Taking two more breaths here, inhaling, exhaling, breath in, breath out, press away the earth and gently rise back up. Take a moment here to soften. And then through the exhalation, begin to come forward. Once again, if you need your block for a third eye pillow, you can. And you can use any height that works for you or simply rest your chin onto your knee. Your hands can soften in to the arches of your feet or if you'd like to take your hands out forward and forearms resting, that is also an option. Yogi choice. 
Come back to the breath. Inhaling. And exhaling. Notice where you need to soften, where you need to let go, where you can release. Letting go can be a real challenge in life, on the yoga mat as well. There was a story that was told by a monk and he was giving a lecture to other monks about letting go and the importance of it. And so the next day, one of the younger monks came to him and said, teacher, I really have a problem with letting go. And so the teacher, the elder monk said, come with me and have a cup of tea. So the teacher poured boiling hot water into a mug and gave the mug to the younger monk and told him to hold it. And so the monk was holding this mug of boiling water and his hands were getting really, really hot. And the teacher kept saying, hold on to that mug. And so the student was holding on to that mug, really trying to hold on to it. His hands were burning. He finally let go and the mug crashed to the tile floor and broke in a million pieces. And so the teacher said, see, I told you, you can let go. So the moral of the story here is, what do you hold on to in your life? And what do you hold on to day in, day out, year in, year out? You're, you're burning yourself, but yet you're refusing to let go. So in this practice of yin yoga, it's all about letting go, surrendering to the pose, surrendering to the earth. Take one more breath in. And as you exhale, begin to rise up. And soften for a moment. Take your palms behind you on fetter. Once again, you can widen the feet with your mat and just wiper the knees from side to side. So, I hope you enjoyed these two poses. We actually held them much longer. We held them anywhere from three to three and a half minutes, and um, except for our side bends. So when you're feeling tight, or you just need to chill out and let go, try doing these two poses on both sides. Namaste.